Welcome to Ewok Talk. I'm Peyton. And I'm Stedman. And today, we're going to swim deeper into the mind of musical sensation 6 9 First, let's shout out our sponsors. Thank you. Today, we will be diving in to 6 9 a.k.a. Treyway, a.k.a. Daniel Hernandez's testosterone to really get a feel of what it's like in his everyday Argentinian life. So today we will begin with reading the lyrics to his iconic song, Tati. Shall we? Shall. Basically what he's saying when he says, hold up, let me get it started. He's basically referring to something being started. He is beginning something. <clears throat> Secondly, he says, BB with the Robins, looking all retarded. You know, I'm sure he's referring to Mr. Robins or Mr. BB with a special mental disability, to say the least. Okay? It says... Next, BB Sagan. So we find out here context clues that BB is the person. So therefore, BB is sagging. You know, BB, that could be his uh, initials, could be his nickname. You know, we don't know. We don't know his friends. We just know Mister Six Nine. <laughs> he then says, "Fly like a dragon," referring to Mister BB's ability to fly and breathe fire. Well. In the next, uh, in the next phrase, he uses some profanity, and we don't do that because we're not about that. We respect women, exactly, and virgins. Now to get into verse one, Peyton. Alright, so basically, what he's saying in verse 1, <clears throat> once again, we do not disrespect women, and he says the B word. I'm not even going to acknowledge that again, I'm sorry. That, uh, so these girls think I'm stupid, I ain't stupid, but really it's, these girls think I'm stupid, I ain't stupid. And, so we both know that he's obviously referring to Mr. BB as being the one that is stupid. Again. Like once again, yes. Then he refers to dummy boys fall in love with it. He's stupid. So pretty much he is uh, crucifying a young man wanting to fall in love with a girl. Do you see a problem in falling in love with a girl that you want to spend the rest of your life with? Because no. I don't. No. No. It's but you tragic. know, society, it's just the society we live in today. It's crazy. Very. All these girls, he says the H word. God bless this guy. He's got he's got a long way to go. Amen. All these girls on my body cut the cut the BS. All right, this is wow. I'm, right I'm sorry. Heart. Yeah. I just left Starlets and I didn't even cash out. So really, he just left um, cross uh, crossover ministries. He didn't cash out there. Or maybe, or maybe he's referring to the former. Uh, dance dance artist cash out yes yeah um the next one is uh back out straight to the trap house I blow her back out totally awesome now I I don't know if she had sand down her shirt and once again we do respect women right I don't know if she had sand down her shirt 
because he blew her back out. Maybe he totally was awesome. sand out of her shirt. Maybe he was doing her a favor. Maybe he was disrespecting her. We don't know. Um, next one. Like a SmackDown, rock bottom, I'm a pin her down. Okay, so that answers my question. He's pinning her down. I guess they're I guess they're play wrestling in the living room floor with his mother and father, and they are allowing this for him to touch a, a girl like this. This is crazy. And then it goes back into hold up, let me get it started. BB with the Robins looking all retarded. BB sagging, fly like a dragon. Girl, you know what? No. Let's go to the chorus. Peyton. So basically, what Mr. Takashi is saying is when he says, pour a semi, basically he's pouring a semicircle. Yes. Then he says, pull up to the cribby, uh. Basically what, you know, he's had a hard past and at one point in his life, he worked at the nursery at his church and he would pull up, he would pull up to the cribby simply to check on the children, you know, kind thing to do. Next thing he says, Licky Licky, Licky on my blicky, uh. When he says this, he refers to the children as well. He lays them down in their crib and sings them a lullaby. You know, you've heard it. Licky Licky, Licky on my uh. Yeah. Yeah. Glad I'm not the only one. All right. Then he says, take a flicky, make a movie with me, uh. Basically what he's saying when he, when he says this is, uh, you know, in their free time at the nursery, kids they make movies together videos even you know like we do it's just simple things to pass the time while the church service is going on you know yeah. then he says take a flicky make them real drippy uh you know I don't know maybe maybe the children maybe they're getting uh cups of water or cups of whatever with their their juice boxes and you know, it might spill on them. Because it therefore in the videos, they are wet, therefore they are drippy. So he then says, Why are you watching me? You all on my IG. When he says I IG, by the way, that's that's Instagram for all of you people out Instagram. there. Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Why are you stalking me? You don't even follow me. Wait. First of all, this is this is a very contradicting statement because why are you stalking me? You don't even follow me. How could someone be stalking him if they're not even following him around? It's it's crazy. It really is. But but you also you also have to think about this too on another page. These kids, three and four years old, I would I would hope to God they don't have an IG. Exactly. Instagram at this age. And how could how could anybody be stalking him? He's in the nursery all day. Oh, he accusations. Really, he, he dedicates himself to that nursery. Yes, he does. And he and he gets, I mean, he gets hard time for that. He get he gets down, but really, he's helping the community, and and you and you all have to understand that. It's a shame. Why you tweet my stuff? You ain't even used to read my stuff. There it is again. That darned b word. You used to leave me on scene and stuff. You know, I just want to hit the point that uh, this man is a lyrical genius. He just rhymes stuff with stuff with stuff three times in a row. And if you can't realize that, if you cannot realize that he's a musical god, hit that X button and get off the channel. Because it, that's enough. It's time that this generation knows hip hop, knows R and B, knows rap. Mm -hmm. On to the next verse. Knows. Oh, 
Okay, so basically in verse 2, what, what he's saying, he goes to the east side, went to the east side, spanked out Juju. East side of the nursery, of course. Right. Goes over there. He's thinking about spanking Juju, but instead he says, hold up. Hold up. Juju on that beat. So all the kids, you know, the millennials, whatever, they start juju and win them because, of, of course, they know that. It's in their DNA when they're born to freaking juju on that beat, hit the quan, whatnot. He says to them, lucky I ain't have it on me. I was going to shoot you. I'm not sure what kind of gun he's referring to. Uh, maybe a maybe a pea shooter. You never know these days. Uh, he, he claims he stays uh, strapped up. But, I mean, who, who's, who's to tell? You know, spanked him on camera, threw it on YouTube. At this point, he's talking about his seven-year-old son, Jose. Um, Jose was caught at school um, writing. Not in cursive. Yeah, it's cr he, he was. <laughs> oh my! I'm sorry. The only thing he could write in cursive was the picture of a penis. And that, that that just shows you what this curriculum has come to in America. It's time to step it up. So he spanks him on camera and he throws it on YouTube. YouTube is a uh, uh, website with all kinds of videos on it, you know. It's awesome. Um, then he proceeds to call his son a stupid little dumb. And I can't say that word again because... We respect women. We, we respect women, yes. Now you on YouTube. So, he, he's saying he spanked his own son, videoed it, put it on YouTube to put out there so everyone can see his son getting his butt beat. And he think, I mean, he just thinks it's a heckin' good time, just a funny joke. It's not funny. But then again, you gotta look at the other side and, and see that 6 9 has renewable qualities. <laughs> if a boy want beef, I'm the type to drag it. Shoot you while you with your girl, then it's back to mackin'. So basically... Mackin', by the way, is a brand name of... Uh... 18 wheeler Mac <laughs> Police pull up on me I don't know what happened Police pull up on you You gonna get the yapping So basically what he's saying is When the police pull up to him He don't know what happened But if the police pull up on His other friend He's gonna get the yapping He's gonna rat him out for him beating his son up on YouTube, which is which is crazy. I don't know how he's got caught. I think they monetized that, made a lot of money off that. That, whatever. We gonna get the clapping. We been on a static. Semi automatics. They gonna get the clapping. So now you know he's talking about a semi automatic airsoft gun. Preferably a nine millimeter spring action. Whatever you prefer. CO twos are not allowed. No. We ain't with the chatting, you little boys capping. But we over at uh, Ewok Talk, no cap. That's just how we roll around here. <laughs> if we catch you lacking, you're going to turn into has-beens. He then goes deep into his love life right here. Just listen. Ran through lust. Hunted bands up. Shout out Spin King. That's my... Wow, he's talking about having sex with his mother now. MF and great. Wow. Blood. Boy. Go, go. 
Muliani, go go Muliani. Muliani is actually Spanish for fighting cobra. So I I'm not sure if he if he actually saw a cobra in the desert one day. He was like, "Go, hey, go." And I mean, it, we we're going to get his testimony at some point. Now we'll, we'll finish the course one last time and get into a much deeper, you know, aspect. Or maybe when he says, go, go, Muliani, we know Muliani means King Cobra. Yeah. Maybe he's referring to the fact that a King Cobra has a hood, you know, the animal has the, yeah. has mm -hmm. the hood behind the neck. Maybe he's, the hood is therefore behind him. What if he's referring to his squad or family behind him? Got the whole hood behind me, like a king cobra. You know, just a thought. I think you... Yeah, I cracked it. You did it. I think I did. Anyway, we'll continue to the chorus one more time. That's all. Um, honestly, I feel like he's a musical genius. Has a rough past, you know, don't we all, though? But, uh, you know, I could see him really making it in the music world, even more than he already has. Because that's just the kind of guy he is. He's, he's a successful man. He's going to be a successful man. Just That's just the, the hows and the do's and the, and the husker do's. Right. He does, you know, like I said... Flaming Hot Cheetos. Like you said, um, yeah. Wow. Um, he, yeah, he, do, he does have a rough past. He does have a rough Abercrombie past. and Fitch. Yeah, he does have a rough, rough past. However, you got to think about those uh, renewable qualities that he has. Tyson Chicken. He pours a semi. Totally awesome. Tyson. He pulls up to the cribby. Uh. And he takes care of those babies. That's all that matters. And the babies are our future. Just, just think about it. Your child, children now, they are our future. And Mr. 6 9 is only doing his part in taking care of these babies. Exactly. So when next time you think and listen to his songs, you know, maybe, hmm, I don't like that. You know, think, think about the bigger picture. This man is taking care of what could possibly your, be your child. And that's all I have to say. That's all for Ewok Talk today. Tune in next week. Thank you for joining in. See ya. Goodbye.